Peace and greetings, everyone. My name is Steve Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Black America's Fear of the Markets webinar presented by Simple Trend System and the Simple Trend System team of traders. We have today a number of our graduates uh, from the Simple Trend System, those uh, brothers who have, uh, and sisters, who have taken the training and have graduated. And you'll be hearing from them this evening. I have my co-host on with me, Brother Mikael. And let me, um, let me get that brother ready to go here. Uh, brother Mikael Muhammad, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, yes, family. Alaikum, family. Wa salam. We're going to be talking about Black America and its fear of the markets. And we have six top reasons why we think, after talking to a number of, uh, of our people over the years, we are going to talk about the top six reasons why black America avoids the global, and I want to emphasize the word global stock market, and the commodity trading markets. I'm going to try and do as little talking as possible and try and get our brothers and sisters who are graduates of the training in on the call. Uh, Brother Mikhail, can you um, take us to the number six reason, please? Number six reason, that is risky. That's one of the uh, reasons I get a lot uh, from people about why we shouldn't be in the market. The only people that actually say that is black America, black people, that it's risky. It's no more risky than you driving a car and getting on that freeway or getting on that highway. Just that risky, you, you, you're not able to tell me if you're able to make it safely from point A to point B, that's something you don't know. You, there's a high risk of getting in an accident or, or, or even losing your life while driving a car. See, we do this every day, but we manage that risk. We manage it by knowing how to drive, by qualifying ourselves how to drive, by getting a license. Then we mitigate that risk by obeying the speed limits, the traffic laws, driving on the right side of the street coming to a complete stop at a stop sign. If the speed limit says 75 or 65, you're doing 65, you're doing 75. Where it becomes risky is when you're a reckless driver. If you're speeding, if the speed limit says 35 and you're going 90, if you're running red lights, if you're uh, driving on a one way the opposite direction, that all increases your risk of getting into an accident. But you mitigate that risk by obeying traffic rules. It's the same way when it comes to the markets. If you jump into the markets without knowing how to trade, without knowing what to do, then it's the equivalent to driving on the wrong side of the street or running red lights or, or speeding. But you mitigate that by knowing exactly why you're getting in, when to get in, what to trade, why you're trading, how much to risk, what not to risk, when to get out of the trade. There are 120 different stock exchanges around the world, including in Africa, that has 29 different stock exchanges. The entire world trades and move trades in commodities and stocks and options. We don't, and the entire world benefits from their ability to trade goods and services or shares from companies, but we don't. And that's what we need to change. That is hurting us. Yes, sir. Uh, I totally understand. I totally agree. I want to see if I can get any of our uh, students to chime in on what they think. I see, I see Sister Latrice Muhammad on the call. Uh, I see her husband as well, Brother Torres Muhammad, but I don't see a microphone next to his name. So it might be that they're both on the same call since they're husband and wife. Let's see if we can get them on the call and able to talk to us about risk. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, sir. Um, brother Mikael really covered everything, and we are taught to deal with actual fact. So I just think with the class, the strategy that we're taught, the specifics, and then the history that we're taught in the class as far as understanding the markets, understanding the monetary system, which helps us to understand what's going on, and in turn helps us to rise above emotion as we are entering the trading game or trading field. I won't say it's a game because it's definitely business, but when we're, when we're entering this, we're taught to 
rise above emotion because we have those specific numbers that were given, specific, specific um, formulas that were given. And we do realize that there's a risk, so, but we, like Brother Mikhail said, we learn to mitigate it so we don't get stressed out when we do go in the negative just a little bit because we know that we have accounted for that. We have a brother in the chat area, I believe, uh, I believe it's a brother, Sidney Barnes says, new to this. Let's go to the reason number five. And we're counting down the top six reasons why black people, black people in America are not in the markets. And yes, ma'am, I'm a sister, she says. Thank you. Um, thank you, sister. I apologize for that. Number reason number five. It's only for the uber rich, otherwise known as white people. <laughs> Brother Vernon, are you there? I'm here, sir. Salam alaikum. Hey, I'll take that one. Uh, it's only for the uber rich, otherwise known as white people. That's a that's a kind of funny one to me. Uh, it, it reminds me of a saying that they had. They said, if you ever wanted to hide something from black people, put it in a book. Doesn't necessarily mean that it won't work for black people. Doesn't mean that it's not good for black people. It's just you know an assumption that's made, and somehow we seem to have taken that on and believed it and practiced it, but it's not necessarily true. The idea that trading or the stock market or anything dealing with global markets, trading commodities, is only and solely and exclusively for uh, rich or white people is totally false. Um, as a matter of fact, the only way that it that you got haves and have-nots and the only way that you got um, powerful people who exploit people who um, you know are, are not powerful is because somebody believed and perpetuated a lie. But there's nothing about business, trading, or uh, financial economic education that is off limit for black people. Nothing at all. As a matter of fact, you, we could almost approach it like we have lost time to make up. So yes, I would urge and recommend that everybody who can, every person of color who can, begin to study and learn as much as you can about economics, finance, uh, particularly trading and uh, trading the system that we use and that we're learning from Brother Steve Fox, the simple trend system. Yes, sir. It's only for the uber rich. You know, the, it's only for the uber rich. Is That's how they get rich. That's how they get rich is from trading. You see, Mark Cuban uh, got rich from the market. I mean, he became a billionaire from trading broadcast stock, broadcast.com stocks back in the day. All your big traders be, or, or big time people are, are became rich that way. It's only us. It's only we tell ourselves that, man. Where they like to keep us at is consuming. That's what we got down pat. You know, they, if they provide the services and they provide uh, the products, we'll buy it. But we're not trading. They're not helping us uh, profit from what we make wealth. Just think about that. Think about the phone that you have. If you got an Apple or Android, iPhone or Android, you, you're helping someone get rich, get wealthy, because they're giving you a product or service that it does help you, but you're not making nothing financially from it. it you're, you, you're actually giving money away. You're paying $100 a month, whatever it is, $100 a month on, on your phone bill. But the people that make Android, Samsung or an iPhone, Apple, they, that, those companies are actually wealthy from what you're doing. So, and they're not showing you how to profit from, or they're not showing you how to share in their bottom line for what you helping to make wealthy. They will take your money. So we have to learn how to offset that. And one of that is, is getting rid of that mindset that it's only for the rich. All the people that uh, Brother Mikhail named, you know, he named Mark Cuban and Apple and all these other people that may be in this uber rich category now, at uh, one point in time, you know, they all were nothing to speak of. Everything that ends up great really does start as something small. So uh, at one point in time, these people you consider uber rich, they may have been in the same shoes, same position as some of the people who are on this call right now. So get that idea out of your mind and just ask yourself the question, the same question that Reginald Lewis asked, why should white guys have all the fun? There you go. All right. It's risky. That's number six. Number five is it's only for the uber rich, otherwise known as white folks. Reason number four, it's rigged. It's a rigged market. It's a scam. 
filled with con artists and sharks. I see Sister Chanel on the call. She's also another graduate of the STS system. Uh, let me see if I can open her mic here. Oh, hello. Yes, Sister. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Just great. Um, good. It's big. It's a scam. Um, you do learn that there are a lot of scams through the systems in the market. There's a way for us to make money as the market rises and falls. So we don't have to lose all our money in a scam or we don't have to be a part of the scam. We have the discipline that we're taught through the market to help us navigate through the stocks. Well, you said we can make you know, money when the market goes up and when the market goes down. How is that possible? It, through the system, he tells us when the trend is coming. So we learn, okay, this is when we should get into the market and then we know it's time to get on our horse and ride that trend. Even when it goes down, we know, okay, it's time to start shorting the market, which is the terminology that we learn when we're in the program. We just get a good, thorough education that keeps us protected while we're involved in the stock market. I don't want everyone that's, that's new and that's listening, that's, that never, uh, or who has that, that philosophy or ideology, or who thinks that, just think about what you do every day. You know, when you walk into a uh, swap meet or you see somebody selling you iPhones on the corner, see somebody peddling you iPhones on the corner, is it real? Or, or somebody that's peddling you uh, Louis Vuitton purses, it ain't Louis Vuitton. You know it ain't Louis Vuitton, but it looks like Louis Vuitton. How do you navigate through that today? See, everything is just buy and sell. It's just, just the venue changes, but it's all buy and sell. You navigate that right now. You, but when somebody's selling you a bootleg DVD, uh, whatever movies out, like Wu X Men, Spider Man, you know it's a bootleg. You know you're not getting quality. But thing you want to do is learn how to offset that. So you want to learn how to avoid those that are definitely take, taking your money and not and not bringing anything on a return. But you do this every day. You navigate through things that are real and things that are scams every day. So how do you navigate through that? How do you not get taken by that? It's all about presentation. It's about the knowledge. It's the same here. We're not the type of traders that trade like you see, maybe you see on television. They, they're trading day in, day out. They got a bunch of screens all over their place. They in a trade today, they out the trade the same day. We're long-term system traders. We'll get more to that as we go, but make it, as you're listening to this presentation, make it uh, apply to what you do every day. Don't make it like it's some different venue. It's not, it's, it's really buy and sell. That's what you wanna do, but you wanna take out the idea that the entire market is rigged, the entire market is scammed, because it's no different than everyday life. Yes, sir, let's jump to uh, reason number three that black America is not in the stock market or commodity markets. I hear you, I hear you, brother Vernon. You wanna jump in on this one? <laughs> yeah, this, this, this thought came to my mind. The last thing you need is inside information <laughs> <laughs> to win in the markets. Um, the, the, the idea that a hot tip or some kind of thing that's gonna be slid to you is the key to success is the, is the furthest thing from the truth. Just about as, as far from the truth as knowing that in order for you to walk down the street, you just simply have to put one foot in front of the other. The beauty of the system that we're learning and that we have learned is that it really is so simple. You watch, you see what direction you need to go in, and you go in that direction. There's no inside information there. It's just go where you're supposed to go. Be where you're supposed to be. If you know that at 3 o'clock somebody's going to beat you up in the parking lot, don't go in the parking lot at 3 o'clock. No inside information, nothing complicated about that. Keep it simple. Debunk that myth. Get that out of your head. Thank you, brother. Let's jump to reason number two. It's inherently evil and controlled by satanic forces. I've heard this one. Someone actually said this to me. See, we got to get out of that thing. Be in a world that's not righteous. Get that off, off number one. But as a, a reason to stay away from the market, then you might as well not do anything in life. Nothing. Everything you use, everything is coming from these companies. Whether those companies benefited from slave labor or those companies are like Nike, they're using uh, child labor over across seas and then doing it for a dollar and then bringing it to you and selling you Jordans for $250. 
in some form or fashion that they're exploiting at every level of the game. Walmart, Home Depot, but to say that it's inherently evil as a reason to keep you from learning how to trade, but at the same time, you'd rather put your energy and spend your time in making somebody else rich. See, I understand we need jobs, and I understand we gotta pay our bills, but when you break it down to it, that is exactly what you're doing. You're, you're spending all your time and your resources, giving eight to 12 hours of your life, making somebody else wealthy, while they give you kibbles and bits just to get by. That's wrong, when they could share the wealth. That's inherently evil. So it's about your logic and how you're looking at something. Let me just say one thing on this, this whole idea of it being inherently evil. You hit on a good point. You hit on a whole lot of good points. But, you know, we're in a world where what really is right and really is good for us, somehow we got the idea that it's what we should avoid. And the stuff that we actually should avoid is what we just gravitate towards. Right. You know, think about the stuff that we eat, the stuff we like to eat, the stuff that we just are going to keep on eating no matter what you tell us. Most of it is the stuff that we should avoid. Whereas eating a salad every day or making sure you drink enough water or staying away from, you know, the sweets and whatnot, we have a hard time with that. So much of what's being presented here, much of what eventually we're going to get introduced to is something that we're going to have to challenge ourselves with, okay? Because we've just been so far behind the eight ball for so long. So yes, one sir. of the questions that you have to ask yourself specifically as it relates to this one, if, if one of the reasons why black people are avoiding uh, the stock market or global markets, you got to realize, first of all, what we're talking a lot about what the market is not, but what is the market? In which market are you talking about? You just stated that there's over 120 markets all around the world. If you want the best coffee in the world, you would go to Jamaica, and the market for buying that coffee is in Jamaica. But it's not evil to go and experience or engage in trade and commerce because you want to get a good or a commodity. It's not evil. It's what's done. That's how you get what you need in the world. You go to a place where things are bought and sold and you buy and sell. No more evil than you stopping by Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks and getting a cup of coffee. Change the focus, change the perspective, and understand that much of what we were thinking all along is absolutely not accurate. Any doubt that you have is dispelled first in the class because everything that is provided and taught us in the class will nip all of that in the bud. You'll see what happens to those that are doing the insider training and dealing with the rig. And then after the class, we're not just put out here to go out and blow money. We have a, a time period that we do virtual training and we actually put it into um, practice. And then you can see the fruits of your labor from that. So all of those being inherently evil, we deal with that. It's dealt with straight up in the class. You see it, and so you know. And like Brother Mikhail said at the beginning, you have those rules, and you follow those rules, and then you're not dealing with the evil. You're not dealing with the um, insider trading or that's just what I wanted to add. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's jump to the number one reason why black America is not in the market. Reason number one, top reason. We believe <laughs> it's gamble, plain and simple. Go ahead, Brother Mikhail. I was just going to say, yeah, I get this a lot. I, I particularly from Muslims that approach me about gambling. Like, it's not the same thing and you can approach the market gambling and you, you, you like anything in life you can approach gambling here's an example if I I've never driven a big rig an 18 wheeler at all you got to go to school and learn how to do that stuff and get a class A I believe with some endorsements air brake endorsements whatever it would be total gambling for me to get into an 18 big a big rig right now and try to drive that bad boy and let's say I get lucky and get it in gear. If I'm going down a mountain, I don't know how to break. I don't know how to drive. I, I just gambled with my life because I don't know what the hell I'm doing driving that big rig. I didn't qualify myself to drive that big rig. If I walk into Sky Harbor Airport, which is here where I'm at, or any airport anywhere, 
and jumped into a 747 or a 777 Boeing and tried to take it off. I don't know what I'm doing. If I just start pressing buttons and sheer luck, that plane starts moving. You say, hey, like, look at this. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gambling with my life. If it somehow got in the air, I damn sure don't know how to get it back down. I guarantee that right now. I'm gambling. Anytime you approach something that requires rules, regulation, and some form of discipline to guide it, to, to operate it, and you just do it when you don't know what you're doing, you are gambling. Well, it's the same thing with the market. If you approach the market and just say, you know what, I'm just going to throw $500 in, in this stock because I really like this stock, Nike shoes, so I'm going to throw $500 in there. Okay, then you're gambling. You don't know the risk that's involved. You don't know why you're getting in. You don't, you don't know when to get out. You don't know how much to risk. You're hoping that, man, everybody buys Jordans, so maybe if I buy Nike, just go up. That's gambling. But if you approach the market with a set of si a system and rules that you know why, when to get in, you're not listening to any pundits, no one's, you're not going off any stock tips, you know exactly when you need to trade and what to trade, and you know how much to risk and when to get out, how much shares to buy. You know all this before you even place an order. Then you know, you know the risk of getting into the trade, but if you just get into something and you don't know what you're doing, it would be equivalent to getting in a car and you don't know how to drive or getting on a motorcycle and you didn't, you, didn't, you don't know how to drive. I wanted to uh, just review the short list, and it's a short list of black billionaires in the world. There are about 1,580 billionaires, and of that 1,580 billionaires, there are exactly nine black billionaires in the world. In the world. This is one of them. Uh, he's number 1,537, Mohammed Abriem. His net worth is $1 billion. But I, what I really want to focus in on is not so much the person, but how they made their money. So the source of wealth for Mr. Muhammad is through communications. Uh, basically, he started a mobile telephone, uh, mobile phone company in, uh, in Africa and the Middle East. That's the least wealthiest black billionaire on the Forbes World's Billionaires. There's another gentleman by the name of uh, Abdul Samad Rabia. His source of wealth is from commodities. Commodities. And by the way, I also want you to notice where they're from. This gentleman is from Nigeria. He's wealthy from sugar, flour, and cement. Then there's a sister on the list. I'm not even going to try and pronounce her name, but her source of wealth is oil. <laughs> and she's also from Nigeria. Oil is a commodity. We trade commodities. Here's a brother on the list. Metals. Mining. He's from South Africa. We haven't even seen one yet from the United States, have we? Here's one. Television. United States. Our sister. Three billion. But we're back to Africa again. Investments. Angola. Five billion. Telecom and oil. Nigeria. Here's another, oil diversified investments from Saudi Arabia. And last on that list is this brother, again from Nigeria, cement, sugar, flour. Sounds like commodities to me. This is where wealth is created, trading building businesses around commodities. Out of those nine billionaires on the Forbes list, the nine black billionaires on the Forbes list, eight of them are from Africa. Just about all of those from Africa are, are in, in some way, involved in commodities and trading. I kind of want to get us to think outside the box 
Because when most of us think about cotton, this is the image that comes to mind. This image here, picking cotton. This image of cotton doesn't come to mind though. This is trading cotton on the New York Commodities Exchange. Here's a chart for cotton. This is a chart for cotton. And on this cotton chart, here's a huge trend in cotton. It's a huge downtrend as well. We don't care if the trend is going up, if the trend is going down. We make money as traders. When you learn the simple trend system, this is one of the first things you're going to learn. We don't think about trading coffee. We only think about going to Starbucks and buying coffee. But here's an uptrend in coffee, and here's a subsequent downtrend in coffee, and a new present uptrend in coffee. Here's another downtrend in coffee. When these commodities are moving up and down on a chart, in the real market, we make money as traders. Cocoa, another huge trend in cocoa. Wheat, crude oil, uptrend, downtrend, a new uptrend. You know, we enjoy vacation. We enjoy good times. Well, what's wrong with Instead of just being a passenger, what's wrong with being on that cruise ship and having stock in that company? Because that's what the stock market is really all about. It's about creating commerce and enterprise and trade. Because someone had to come up with the money to build this cruise line. That money came from the stock market. Here's a chart for Carnival Cruise. It's a volatile chart. In fact, we like volatility. But this is the kind of chart we make money on as traders. We're not short-term day traders. We're long-term, systemized, rules-based traders. We, we like seeing the president with his family. But in order for him to do this, I, I imagine before he became president, he had to, uh, if he wanted to go to the beach, he had to get on a plane and take his family to Hawaii. And then I imagine he had a place where he stayed in a hotel. I would venture a guess. Well, vacation, airline, hotel. Here's Delta Airlines. Huge trends in Delta Airlines. Hyatt Hotels. Huge trend. I imagine when he's there on vacation with his family, he and his wife might pull out a credit card. It's Visa. These are recent trends for Visa. Long-term trends. Weekly long-term trends for Visa. Here's MasterCard. I imagine when you're on vacation, you might venture to rent a car. Here's Avis. This is the market. This is what we teach in the Simple Trend System. Now, I, I, yeah, I, li I love this quote. Right. The average man doesn't wish to be told that it's a bull or a bear market. What he desires is to be told specifically which particular stock to buy or sell. He wants to get something for nothing. He does not wish to work. He doesn't even wish to have to think. Jesse Livermore. Jesse Livermore is considered one of the greatest traders of all time. Simply because twice he did this in two stock market crashes. You don't hear them talk about, when you hear stock market, you always hear them talk about crashes and how we should fear. But Jesse Livermore, this man I just quoted, he made $100 million in the crash of 1929. See, he didn't take a loss. He made $100 million. That's That's $12 billion in today's dollars. This man right here, considered one of the greatest traders because he did it in 09. He made $3 million in 09, crash of 1909, and he made $100 million in 1929. We're kind of patterned off that philosophy of trends. And, and this quote is a good one because I find a lot of people always ask me, hey, can you trade my money? Uh, you know, once, once they find out that I'm a trader. It's all my people is the only one that say that to me. And I find that irritating to a degree. They're the only ones who ask. You know, they don't want to learn. We don't, we don't want to do nothing that requires discipline to learn something. We just want to benefit. Here, take my money and do this. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's just not how it's got to go. You got to qualify yourself. 
It's all about qualifying yourself. Then knowing what to do. And as Latrice said, as you learn, before we even turn you loose, you gotta, you gotta what we call paper trade. You gotta prove the theory. You gotta prove it to yourself. If you can't push a paper account up in profit, then you ain't ready to risk real money. It's kind of like a pilot who flies for Southwest Airlines or, or American Airlines. If that pilot can't have not trained on a simulator, he ain't never touched the simulator, but he's saying, hey, I, I, I read, I studied, but I, I think I'm already to fly. You're not going to get on a plane with this dude. And if this dude can't get a simulator, a real simulator off the ground, fly it safely, there's no way in hell I'm going to get on him, get on, get in a plane with him in real life. See? So don't mitigate paper trade. It's about proving that theory. And most of the traders that's on this phone right now, they have to go through that. And most of them push their accounts in numbers you would not believe with people who have no financial training, people who only risk half of 1% on one trade. Half of 1%. I have people ask, well, you know, I put 3% in my agent. That's too much for a simple trade system. Half of 1%. And we've seen what we've done. You want to learn how to trade. That's I, I think if some of you that is on my Facebook or, or talks to me, I'm always advocating learning how to trade. I never tell you to jump out in the market. Burger King. It's an interesting uh, show that I, I, I recommend everybody watch because it's it's about business. It's called Silicon Valley on uh, HBO. It's a comedy about a, a startup called Pi Piper, but it teaches sound business principles. And this Burger King principle is one that I really love. The guy, uh, there, uh, he's investing in this company, and this company comes to him and say, hey, we need $15 million to save our plant, or we're going to have to close it down. And the guy is a multi-billionaire who they come into. He, he doesn't give them the money out of his pocket. He goes around it in a weird way. He goes to Burger King. And he goes to Burger King, and he buys futures. That's commodities what Brother Fox was just talking about. And he doesn't use his own money, but he goes and gets the money out of the market by trading futures as much as he was going to make $70 million profit on that. So he could have gave him $15 million, but he didn't. He went and got it out of market. So I'm going to play that. You can see what we're talking about. Oh, Peter, you're here. Uh, we were supposed to meet 40 minutes ago with the guys from Astrophile about the emergency capital injection. As we discussed, uh, our North Carolina plant went sideways. So we need 15 million now, or we'll have to shut down. Have any of you ever eaten at Burger King? Uh, yes. <laughs> Why? Well, I was just driven past one. And while I know their market cap is $7 billion plus, I realize I am unfamiliar with their offerings. Okay, fine. But what does that have to do? Is it popular among your peers? Is it enjoyed? People seem to like it. It's okay. And their selection consists solely of these burgers, of which they are presumably king. <laughs> they have other things. Chicken, fish. Oh, I'm sorry, what, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> here is what we will do. Monica, have one of the assistants go to the nearest Burger King location and purchase one of everything. This is which one? The BK Double Stacker. Fascinating. Peter, I know that you are incredibly busy with this, but I made a personal promise to the Astrophile guys that none of their employees would lose their job, which will happen at midnight. Do you see this? The Junior Whopper? No, not the sandwich. This seed atop the breading. Those are sesame seeds. A high number of these breadings have sesame seeds on them. Billions of breadings. Sesame seeds. They only grow in certain microclimates. Peter, I know that you don't want to cause 173 people in North Carolina. 
cicadas. Mr. Gregory, this is ridiculous. Sir. Mr. Gregory, we need an answer, and we need it now. Yes, we need money now. And I'm sure that Burger King and Sesame Seeds and whatever else you've been mumbling about in here all seem lovely to think about, but they Myanmar have... Myanmar and Brazil. No, no, no more of this, okay? Are we getting the money or not? Will you please just tell us what the hell is going on? Amusing coincidence that two of the three countries that provide the world sesame seeds have such large cicada populations, no? The cicadas of Myanmar emerge every 13 years, while the Brazilian cicadas emerge every 17. Next year, they will hatch simultaneously for the first time in 221 years. Crops from both countries will be decimated. Unlike Myanmar and Brazil, Indonesia has no cicada population. I was surprised to see Indonesian sesame seed futures priced so low. I made a purchase. And now, if the shortage spikes the global price even 10%, we'll profit... Evan? Six to eight million dollars. If you wish, I could... Tap that projected revenue and make you a bridge loan of $15 million, gentlemen. <sighs> Unless you need more? No, that's... <laughs> you holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> Happy? See? I told you he was taking care of it. And now... Would anyone like some BK? <laughs> Evan was kind enough to go out and get breakfast. It's just... Sitting here. Actually, we'd... we'd I'd love yeah. some. Thank you. <gasps> so much. Is there cumin in this barbecue sauce? I will definitely find out. Please do. Hmm. I love that video. It's excellent. It's an excellent example of why we should trade. Because the man is a multi-billionaire and it's based on a real Peter Thiel, I believe. It's based mostly composite of him. And it's really based on a real life scenario with peas Bill Gates did that exact same thing that they made a satire of, but he did it with peas. But it's interesting that this man is a multi-billionaire and he could have gave that money to them. 15 million to a multi-billionaire is nothing. But he did not do that. He went and got it out of the market. He saw that Burger King has a $7 billion market cap. He saw that they're dependent heavily on sesame seeds. He saw that cicada bugs was getting ready to infest. Myanmar and Brazil, I think it was. They're the people who supply the most sesame seeds. So that's gonna that's gonna affect their, their it's gonna uh, supply and demand is gonna be affected. But Indonesia makes sesame seeds or India makes sesame seeds. Their, their futures were real low. He got in, and because there's going to be a high su supply and demand, it's going to drive the price up. And he's going to make 68 or 70 million dollar profit on that, and then give them a bridge loan of 15 million. See, he went and got the money out of the market. Now we do the same thing, except that we we just go eat at Burger King. We ain't thinking about trading Burger King. We want to get. Can I get a double whopper with cheese, king size with some fries and Sprite? We're consumers. This Caucasian in this episode, based on a real a life scenario, he went and looked at Burger King and saw, man, they $10 billion company. Let me go look, oh, they use sesame seeds? Oh, there's a cicada bug infestation that's, that's gonna hit the, the, the companies that uh, pr uh, produce sesame seeds? That's gonna bring up supply and demand. I'm gonna go get this money. When he couldn't just tap into his bank account and get it to him, but he went and had somebody else finance his objective. He, this is where we lose because we just consume that Burger King. We 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 are so destructive with it. I see some some people in the neighborhoods. I mean, they put dunk cars on 24s with Burger King and McDonald logos. They're not getting paid for that. They're doing that from their own free will, and and they eat at Burger King. But we're not thinking about trading what we consume. We have to offset what we're consuming. And as Brother Fox is showing right here on this chart. Burger King been in an uptrend in the last year. It's been in an uptrend from April of, um, of 13 to right now. It's at $27 a share, and it was at $16 a share. This is what the simple trend system trains you to do. You only move on trends long term. See, it's easier to see when you see a trend like that. That's long. Got in back in March or April, 
uh, at $16 a share, and now it's $25.34 right now. That's what we're talking about when we say offset the consumption. It's really about changing your ideology, your philosophy, and how you see everything that you use every day. See, when you learn how to trade, then everything in your house, you should offset. If you had to spend money to, to do it, to get it, to purchase it, and you help that company to get wealthy, if they're getting residual income from you, like cable television, if you have Time Warner, if you have Cox, DirecTV, Dish Network, they're providing you a service, okay, fine. But you're helping that company to be a multi-billion dollar company. Where is that showing? Where is that help showing in your bottom line? And if I could add to Brother Mikhail, my name is Brother Amir. Um, we are, uh, I was a prospecting student, now a graduate student, now uh, on the job training in paper trading, uh, me and my wife. And uh, it's an interesting story I just wanted to share briefly with uh, Brother's point about, um, um, I guess I would say your ideology or you learn a, a, a viewpoint or, or how to think systematically rule-based with uh, the STS system in trading. But before that, me and my wife, we were both MBA grad, uh, uh, we, we have MBAs and we had trained in business for nearly a decade, even to the pursuit of uh, our own uh, transportation company. And one thing that we learned, well, it was through a conversation Brother Mikel was having with another person on Facebook. And I read it. And the language that, that uh, shocked me was the language, I know Brother Mikel has a, a music background, I have a business background. So the language that he was using couldn't have they shouldn't have matched. In other words, it wasn't a musical language he was using. He was using a very specific business language and talking about the market. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I reached out to brother and I mean, up all night trying to get a, the brother to get, and he got back with me the next day. The point I'm making is that through the language that he was using and what we learned through the system, Brother Fox does a wonderful job in this class because I had not traded anything. I never even been in the market. Was um, Kind of trepidatious with the market, didn't didn't have any type of knowledge, and that didn't that didn't stutter, brother. That did, in fact, he, that was uh, encouraging for him. Uh, so me and my wife, we tag teamed, and uh, brother trained us both, and now we're in the market, and we are um, uh, very aggressive in the market. Um, so I just wanted to offer. I don't know. Uh, you know, there's certain characteristics and traits that go along with this process. Again, you know, patience uh, is the one trait that I'll just bring up that you have, you must have, you must have. It's, it's just a key in business in general. It's a key in systematic thinking. Um, but at the same time, you know, the thing that gives birth to patience is, is awareness of where you're at in the process. And so, Brother, uh, brother, the STS system teaches us to be fully aware of where we're at in the process of trading, how we enter a trade, why we enter the trade, what we're going to uh, risk in that trade, uh, when to exit the trade, when to add to the trade, and so forth. So this is something that you're able to watch, and your patience is built and based and strengthened on the fact that you're in a, you're following a system that you're not out there on your own trying to swim in the middle of the ocean. So it created a swagger in me and my wife. You know, we, we, we walk with a swagger. We, we have knowledge. We're able to utilize the language. We're able, to, we're able to do things on a lot more graduate level than we did with graduate degrees. Presentations aren't put on just to, um, to sway uh, your thinking. They're to encourage you to think at a different level, to invite you, as we were invited, you know, to uh, want for you what we want for ourselves, but invite you to a, a way of freeing yourself. Thank you, Brother Amir, and say hello to your to your wife. I we haven't talked in a while, but uh, it's good to hear your voice, family. I, I kind of want to. Oh, good. I put on the phone. I want to hear voices. That's yes, sir. That's a peace, hey, sister. How are you? I'm fine. And yourself? Less than highly favored. Thank you, sister. Good to hear your voice. All right. Brother Torres is telling me he was not able to participate. Let's get you talking right now, family. Yes, sir. Peace, family. How are you? Fine, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Nice and clear. The only thing that I would add is that we have to change our thinking. Um, the students have already went into depth about the program and how it works. But if we don't change our thinking, then we won't be able to really see the benefit of this SCS system. 
it used to be a commercial on that would that they used to have scared straight but I like to say that we've been scared dumb because for so many years even when you're educated my wife has her MBA I have my bachelor's both of us have always continued to have continuation classes with real estate bail bonding or what have you but if we don't learn how to overcome our fears and how to begin to think outside of the box as one of the brothers said earlier then we will never be able to really fulfill or see our potential in order for us to really become wealthy and as brother Fox you, you show the on the on on the screen you show the different billionaires and it's, it's no coincidence that all the billionaires are out of country not in America because in America the educational system was never created to truly educate us into the area of business we were never taught the art of, or the science of business the science of economics black people spend their money as soon as they get their paycheck when we get paid we got to go ahead and spend our money we were trained to spend our money as soon as we get it so we just have to change our mindset change our thinking and begin to partake in this global market so we have to become a global people because we are a global people. We are all over the world and Brother Fox can definitely speak on that. But we have to change our mentality. So that's all I wanted to add. Um, I enjoyed listening and it's exciting to be a part of something new that is being introduced to us and our people for us to be able to better our community. So I'll just leave, leave with that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you for those those words. Um, Sydney Barnes says asks the question: What literature do you recommend, be it magazines, books, etc., to start understanding trade and stocks? Uh, sister, what I recommend is that you come join us because what we teach you're not going to find it in any book. What we teach you're not going to find it on CNBC or Bloomberg TV. You'll find people talking about it, but nobody's actually doing it. The goal here is to get a hundred brothers and sisters to learn to trade, pull your resources together, and trade together as one unit. And that's what we are currently doing. We have about 40 brothers and sisters who have been trained. Every, just about every week we have graduates going through the system. It's a 15-week program, two hours a week, which is basically the amount of time you're going to spend actually trading you know some people spend more some people spend less but on average you're going to spend about two hours of your time actually trading now while you're learning to trade it's a different story you might spend twice that three times that while you're learning to trade your trading is going to be done as a group basically following the system so i hope i answered your question sister i want to say sister because i mistaked you for a brother sister uh, sydney barnes uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, there is no book. There, there are people writing about stuff in a book, but they're not doing what we're doing. Yes, sir. Fam. I want to say just towards that, me personally, that I have about five Caucasians right now asking me to teach them how to trade. And they've been in the market trading way longer than I have. I had no knowledge of trading until I met Brother Fox. Kind of hard to believe when we say that to you because, you know, we're black people. I understand. And usually when we look at our own, it's already amount of doubt there. You know, black people talking about money, like, ah, oh, must be a scam. That just, that's just the remnant of self-hatred. And I, I get it. I'm a, I'm a brother too. So I, I get it. I understand our people. But I have Caucasians right now based on what I learned from the simple trend system. They, they, they shook and, and, and how I'm able to know what I know. And I, I don't know what they know you know it, it, not everything on in the market is is necessary to you that's one thing you find in simple trends is just like i'm a recording engineer not everything on a console a, a million dollar console i've ever used i may have learned about it in school but doing mixes I, or, or doing the work that i do for television i've never used it never had to use it and i, and I accomplished what i accomplished every day and i have about six or seven hundred uh, episodes of music on television right now so it's the same with the market. Now, one of the things that the great brother Fox would say to me, and I love saying this, is that he would say, you, you will know more than 
99% of the people in the market. He said because 99% of the people in the market don't know what they're doing. They're gambling. And I had to say, man, that was hard to believe. Because, I mean, the way the market is put to you, you have to, you got to have an economics degree. Uh, you you got to study at Cornell or Harvard and study this long thing about finance. No knowledge of that. And this is what Brother Five said confidently to me. Very humble, as you will get to learn, Brother Five. He's a very humble brother. And, and I, I listened to him. I, I had nothing to dispute it. It was just very hard to believe based on what I the little that I knew about the market. It wasn't until I, I learned the training and dealt with Brother Fox every day. And then when I start going through big wig stuff where I can see, man, why is he trading this? Like, what? That don't make sense. It's where I got to see time in and time in and time in. Like, wow, they're gambling. We're doing the exact same thing that Jesse Livermore did, which is you pay attention to the trend. So this, it sounds too good to be true. That's what we all say to this day with Brother Fox. Man, it's, we just, I say it to him all the time. Like, I just still can't believe what I know and what I'm able to prove. This is about learning a system. We teach the system. If you can do basic mathematics, if you can read a roadmap, if you can read an atlas, if you can uh, just do some basic logic, you should be able to do the system. It's not easy. I always say, it's not easy, but it is a simple system. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna end this in the next five minutes. I'm gonna give uh, Brother Michael, ancient trader X, one of our graduates, uh, a chance to say a few words. The mindset is definitely key. I'm just happy that as far as working collectively is the biggest asset that we have. There's only one thing that I want to read, then I'll get out the way. Uh, it says, do not be too proud to meet together as leaders and teach to discuss the solution of how we can get out of our condition. This is a quote from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the biggest thing that I've learned from the system is really don't be fearful of something that's new. Of course, we always have trust issues when someone brings something to us that we're, that we're not familiar with. There might be a hesitation after everything has been said today, but just kind of open up your mind, be open to something that's new, and know that, like Brother Torrance said, there's a vast amount of knowledge that, that wasn't taught to us. And everything that we've learned in America is from a perspective of being slaves. So the image that Mr. Fox showed of us being slaves in, in, in pink and cotton is the exact position that this country wants us in. And we were never to learn the knowledge that those nine billionaires know, which is to take ourselves from consumers and be actual producers. Thank you all. It looks like everyone stayed on the call just about. And uh, we have a, a ton of people on the call. I think learning how to trade changes everything. It literally does. Again, I thank you all for coming. Thank you, thank all the uh, presenters for presenting. All right, everyone. Peace. Assalamu alaikum.